this is going to be fun. <laughs> this is uh, 3D Embossing Folders 101, sort of a, a, a basics tutorial on how to use these amazing embossing folders. So I have just a, a sample. I have about, I don't know, six of them here, but we offer over 30 different styles of 3D embossing folders. And there are now a new product as well. Um, this is an impresslet, which is both an embossing folder and a die cut in one. So you can find a couple of those as well. So in today's video, we're going to go over how to use these. A couple tricks and tips to get you going on creating with these folders. Let's look at what they can do. This is just one small example. Look at the dimension. Look at all of these right. Look at this is the folder that did it. Okay. So this is a 3D texture fade. This particular one is from Tim Holtz. And look at all these little nubby details, the letters, the typeface, and the difference between a regular embossing folder and a 3D embossing folder is that when you have a regular embossing folder, it's just um, highs and lows on the folder itself. Whereas a 3D, it's, it is completely designed differently so that there's all these multiple levels. The, the design can go up, down, sideways from the side. And so it can give you just this amazing dimensional look. Hi, Barbara from Sublimity. Welcome. Look at that. Look at how the, those letters stand out on this foil paper. You do not have to use foil paper. You can use all kinds of paper. It does need to be thicker though. Okay, so we're going to get started on how to use them, and uh, hopefully if you have any questions, you can ask those in the comments, and I'll try to get those answered. If I miss your question, I will answer later, too, in the comments section. Okay, so I have a few, it's a few different styles here. Um, what I've just shown you is the one that is called Typewriter from Tim Holtz. I also have, this is my, probably my most used one. This is Lumber. It creates this incredible wood grain. I can't wait to use that one with you guys. These swirls are really cool. I love them. Um, and this one, whew, this one is incredible. I cannot wait to show you what this one looks like when you emboss it. So useful all year round. There's lots of new ones available now too. And this is the standard size. We also have the mini. Same idea, same material, same raised look. It's just in a smaller design and then I already showed you the impresslet which is the same technology but with also a die cut attached. So one of the biggest differences between um, these kind of folders and regular embossing folders is that you'll notice well obviously they're a different color and Sizzix, the Sizzix brand also makes them. Those are going to be like a pinky coral color and the Tim Holtz ones are a gray color. So that's sort of your visual indication that you're not dealing with your everyday average embossing folder. Regular embossing folders are white and they are just two dimensional. They're fun, they have their place, but these are incredible. The biggest difference here is that one side of the folder is much thicker than the average. It's very um, sturdy, it's heavy duty. And so we can't do, use them, you don't emboss with them in the same manner as you emboss with regular. So let's go ahead and emboss something so you can see how it works. You can use this with your Big Shot or if you have a new fold away machine, that will work too. But you just need a, an embossing or a die cut machine, sorry, a die cut machine that is um, wide enough to accept the folder. If you're using your Big Shot, you just need the platform where I have removed the shim. We do not need that. And you only need one cutting pad. You don't, you don't need two. So all we need is this and one cutting pad, which will come with the machine when you buy it. And then your paper choice needs to be one that is a little heavier duty. So I have a lot of foil papers here. I have card stocks. Um, they just, uh, these range from about 80 weight to maybe 100, 120. Watercolor paper would work. Um, something a little heavier duty. If you, if you use really lighter weight paper, you run the risk of your paper tearing. Okay, so let's do... Um, I really, I wish I can't decide. They're so fun. I'm going to just do a, a pink foil paper. This foil paper is from Tim Holtz Ideology. This one comes in a bunch of different colors. Um, the cardstock, I like to use 100 pound card maker's choice. 
Um, watercolor paper would also work for this. All right, so let's do the swirls. First thing, okay, obviously we have a diff, different kind of sandwich, so we only have one plate and the base. We have this, and the reason we only have one plate is because this, the thicker part of your folder serves as the other plate. See, they are the same thickness. See that? So that serves as the other plate. The other thing that we need to do differently is we need a little bit of water. So water in a misting bottle is ideal. And you're just going to mist, I'll do this on camera, but for the rest of the time I'll probably do it off camera. I'm just going to mist it once or twice on each side. Very, very lightly. On the metallic you can see that it, the water is beaded up on there. And that's fine. The reason we want to get the paper wet, or just slightly damp is a better term, um, is because it will soften the paper and allow it to mold around the design. I put my hand on a tack this morning. <laughs> I don't know why there was a tack on the floor, but I was crawling around and I don't remember. Oh, I had to plug something in and I just, oh, that hurt. <laughs> so now I have a weird, a weird bandaid. All right. So I'm going to put this into my folder. Now these, like all embossing folders are going to give you a positive and a negative design. So we'll have an embossed and we will have a debossed. So that's going to be fun. So then I'm going to put my, my dampened paper inside my folder and put that on top of my um, just plain platform and then one cutting plate on top of that. The other thing that we need to do a little bit differently for, for the best outcome is to run this through three times. So I'm going to go first in one direction and then back in the other. It's not absolutely necessary you do this, but it definitely gives you, um, an, uh, the, well, let's just look. <laughs> Are you ready for the review? Wow. Wow, every single time I do this, I am always impressed. Look at this dimension. Look at that design. It is just popping off the page. And of course, when you use it with metallics, it really captures the light on every single level. Isn't that amazing? So that's the difference here. We're gonna use only one cutting pad, straight platform, dampen the paper a little bit. After that, you just go to town embossing. And then of using a, a higher weight paper is um, recommended. Okay, I would love to show you this um, weave. I think it's called Inter Intertwine is what it's called. I just absolutely love this one. Um, it's kind of, uh, to me, it looks, it reminds me of Easter baskets, but you could definitely use this all year long. It also looks, uh, to me, I think it's just gorgeous with with like some floral die cuts on it or something like that. So I have 100 pound cardstock. I misted it with a little bit of water. And I'm going to put this in here. Oh, you're right. I didn't show the back. So here's that pink one. Let's look at the back side. This is the debossed side. So everything is down. Isn't that amazing? Like, I don't even know which side I like better. <laughs> look at that. So cool. All right. And I'm going to close that up, put this inside of my big shot, and crank it through. And I am going to do the three times. So I'm going to go once one way, and then once the other. Now, if you have the new fold away machine, you would do the same thing. Okay. And reveal. Oh my gosh, you guys. Okay. Check out this detail. What? Look at all the tiny little vines. And also, look at the levels. How did this flat piece of paper just turn into what looks like I hand wove? Look at how deeply that has indented right there. This is just insane. <laughs> it's hard to believe, and here's the backside. It is hard to believe that an embossing folder that easily created this much dimension. And it really, I mean, that's, it's just get the paper wet, use a stronger paper and use only one plat, one, um, cutting mat. So cutting pad, that is amazing and so easy to do. Now from here, you can go ahead and add ink, add paint, add whatever you want to. You can go full mixed media, put your whole arsenal onto it. If you want to, you can actually do that before or after you emboss it and you'll get two different looks because if you apply ink or other things to this while it is um, 
already been embossed, the inks and the paint or whatever you're using is going to hit the highlights a lot stronger so you can get two different looks. And again, you can go either direction. Let me go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and add ink to this, but before I do, let me emboss a couple more things because I, you have to see the wood. You have to see the wood. Now, I think to me, the wood looks the best on plain craft cardstock, but um, this also looks great in white. It's, it's, I don't think it looks great in metallic, but um, you can certainly appreciate the, the design a lot. So this one is lumber. I absolutely love this one. This is my all-time favorite for sure. Okay, mist, mist, very, very lightly, just plain water. These embossing folders are slightly wider and slightly longer than your average embossing folder. So it does for um, mixed media purposes or for card make makers, gives you a little bit more room to adjust the paper around on the, um, on the folder itself. Okay, which is helpful on things like the, um, on this one where I was able to make sure I got the A when I embossed. I was able to get that first line right where I wanted it with the ABC. Okay. So once, now some people will, um, oops, some people will at, after once or twice turn it a little bit and that is good to do if you think of it. You don't have to. That's not so much for a better embossing. I don't think it's more so to preserve, to be using the full width of your roller inside of your machine. Um, it just helps with your wear and tear, especially if you're going to do a, uh, a lot of the same card. Okay. Oh my gosh. This is just incredible. Look at this wood grain. Does this not look like a piece of wood? Look at that. Now where it's a little bit darker was just where I had where the water collected a little, but that will dry away. Wow. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Okay. Um, I guess I'll do one of the minis real quick and then we will do adding some ink. Okay. This one is the tentacle. So let's get it wet. Don't forget to get it wet. I shouldn't say wet. Just give it a, a very, very light misting. All right. Put that guy in there. And this is 80 pound black cardstock I'm doing now. And I think it's one of the lighter weight ones that I have to show you today. This is some washi tape from a previous project. Okay. Dun, dun, dun. Oh my gosh, it is stunning in black. Oh gosh, I hope that comes across on camera. This will be a good one for me to add some ink to so you can see it. Look at this dimension though. Wow. This one is so pretty. Okay, well, let's add some color and see what that looks like. Just gonna move this for a minute. Okay, so there's a couple different ways we can add color. I'm going to add color to um, some of the stuff we've already done and then I'll show you adding color to a um, folder before you um, emboss it. So let's start with this one because I just, it's just so gorgeous. So this is the interwoven. And what do I have? I wish I would have brought a lighter color over here, but that's okay. So a couple ways you can do this. We can add it directly from the pad. So what color I have is Vintage Photo and Distress Oxide. You could use whatever kind of ink pads you have. My ink pad is raised. So it's going to, I can just directly rub this over the top and let it capture, hit those highlights. I'll do half of this one. Okay. And maybe we'll add a little bit of this darker color as well. Okay. So that's lightly rubbing it. Let me bring it in close. So it's kind of capturing all of those. Now I think it looks a little bit spotty. A couple things you could do. I'm going to put a little bit of water down here and a paintbrush. This ink is reactive with water, so I can just go over the top and bring out that, let, let the water react with the ink, and it creates essentially watercolor.
or you could spray it and let it sit. Let me bring this closer. So now we have a little bit more of a, a controlled overall color, which is fun. Let's see what the backside looks like. Cause it's going to hit different parts of it. Mm -hmm. Yep. See how it went for the opposite parts. So on this side, the parts that stayed white, now on this part, the start parts that were white are what get the dark, which is fun. You could also apply, apply water just like this and let the colors blend. Just let them do their thing. So that's, that's fun. You could also apply the color. Let me see if I have a good brush here. Okay. So I'm going to use a clear, or I'm sorry, a blending brush. I was trying to say clean and I'm going to purposefully rub it in to the to the embossed area and this gives me really good coverage and more control so I can like really get in there and apply ink exactly where I wanted it and I can control how heavy or how light I'm going by the pressure I'm using and then I can take another color See if I have a good brush for that. This is a black, and I can just hit the outside edges a little bit. So I just kind of hit the corners on that one. And look at how much depth that gives it. So two, so very different looks. I really like this one. You could also use paint. Um, what color? What kind of paint do I have? Here's like a, a sable brown color. And I think you could apply it with a paper towel or a foam brush. I'm just going to get the tiniest amount here. And I can just literally paint it on. And then I could add other colors, other strokes of color. Do I have a good... We're going to add a black or a white, but here's what it looks like with some paint on it. Now I paint, I added this ink after I embossed. You could also first apply it to the plain paper, let it dry, and then emboss it for a totally different look. What would happen is like here, see how it's caught the black caught on top of the higher raised edges. If I if I did all that first and then embossed it, it wouldn't look the same. It wouldn't look as dimensional, but it would still be fun. So it kind of depends on your folder. Okay. So I'll set that one aside to dry. My mat's a little bit wet. So that's adding after. And then there was another thought was, what if we added ink to the folder itself? Yes, Valerie, yes, you could watercolor first. That would be amazing. Okay. So let's do, which one would be good to add color to first? Maybe the floral? Of course, the colors I have are all kind of, okay, here's a pink one. So I can add this to either the embossed side or the deboss side, whichever you prefer. And you can rub it directly on your ink pad, if you're, or on your pad itself. If you're using um, Distress Ink or Distress Oxide, this will clean up with water very, very easily. So I can just literally rub it on. I can pat it on whatever you want to do. Now I'll be putting slightly damp um, paper in here. So it will sort of react with the ink and diffuse the color a little bit. I didn't cut any paper that small. <laughs> Pardon me for a moment. I think this will fit. Okay. It's a little big, but that'll work. Okay, so I'm just going to mist it once on each side. So I have slightly damp paper. I'm going to lay that in the folder. And bring my machine back up here. This, These embossing folders will not work in 
embossing only machines. So if you have like, there used to be a, a blue one with like a little beaded handle, look like a little purse. Um, that one's not gonna work because that is for the regular embossing folders. That came out long before 3D and folders ever thought about. So um, the, yeah, that one will not work. You need to have a regular die cut slash embossing machine like the Big Shot or the Fold Away. time back the other way <laughs> all right let's see what she looks like wow she is pretty look at that that is so pretty now if I add ink to the other side it'll look different so let's try that let's clean this um, I just need some water I'll use a paper towel right off if you run it under underwater it comes off even without with with zero effort okay so the first time I did it on the heavy side this time we'll put ink on the lighter on the other side of the folder just so we can see the difference I love that you can achieve different looks with the same with the same folder I think that's just and it's not just this folder, it's all folders. All right. When I cut that paper, this one got a little bit skinny, but that's okay. Spritzing it once and twice, once or twice. All right. Okay, look at that one. So we put it, this is like faux letterpress because we put it on the negative side. So the ink has been pressed down, down into the paper. And this one is on the other side. So we get sort of the background. Done. It looks kind of like vintage wallpaper almost, doesn't it? But it has texture that is in, just incredible. Okay, another fun thing you can do is instead of applying the ink directly from the pad is you could ink up a, a brayer just rubbing this on the ink pad and then apply that and you'll get very very clean coverage when i did it if you may have noticed there was kind of streaky and we can see it a little bit modeled here and a little bit of the streaks here that's because i applied it directly you saw that i was dragging it along but that you have to accept that that's going to give you sort of that vintage built-in look if you want more of a just a soft glow of color then apply the ink with a brayer to whichever side you want and then do it okay so another fun thing to do do oh gosh i wish i had a soft color of paper well this one will work this will work okay let me clean this off real quick So have you all used um, these kind of embossing folders before? I would be curious if you have any of your own tips you'd like to throw into the into the comments, into the chat there. That'd be nice of you. Okay. So another fun thing to do is to emboss. Let's do it. Let's do it on the sleeve here. So this is going to not only do the embossing but also die cut it so this is an impresslet so it's a 3d folder slash impresslet so i've gone gone ahead and wet my paper i'm going to put it in there it's going to die cut out these leaves as well as emboss them at the same time this is the oak leaf it's nice that you get two now we're gonna do the three passes one Two, three. Oh my gosh, look at that beautiful leaf. Let's get this guy out of there. There we go. 
you could save this piece and use it as a stencil for another project. All right. And these guys are slightly wet, but we can let them dry. But look at the detail of these leaves. All those little veins. And it's, it's rounded. The whole die cut has been rounded on the edges, which is something I love. It looks very molded. Even all these tiny, tiny little imperfections and dots, those are those are built into this folder. This folder means for those to be there. That's how it's designed. All those little, every single little dot ridge imperfection is there. It's almost, I mean, I think they're going to be doing fingerprints next. <laughs> I mean, that's how detailed these are. These look incredible done in metallic ink, by the way. Okay, um, what I was going to show you, which actually would be better on a regular embossing folder, but that's okay. I'm going to just use these as a shim for myself, just because it'll be easier to hang on to that way. But you can also imagine that this is just a regular embossing folder that didn't die cut anything. You can take um, your Versamark or whatever kind of clear embossing ink you have, clear, and I'm just going to gently go over the top of just, so I'm just rubbing the ink pad, which is raised over the leaf itself. And what this does is it adds this tone on tone sort of look. So we're just slightly coloring the cardstock really. And the Versamark will actually look good with um, any color of cardstock. This is the Versamark, that's what's intended to do. So if you have like a black, or dark green or navy or whatever red whatever color you wanted this ink would be ideal for it so all it's doing is we're just applying this clear ink which is all which its intention this particular one its intention is to be a watermark right so it just makes it, that paper look a little bit darker wherever you apply the ink so it's really fun for making your own stamped backgrounds too but i'm just applying this carefully rubbing it over the raised leaf there and it gives you this beautiful subtle color variation now it's on a wet paper so it's hard to see so I'm going to pick them up and put them on the dry side or do I have a dry one I'll put it on the back of this so you'll be able to see but this also you don't have to have a die cut version for this see how much darker that looks So if you had, if this were just embossed and not die cut, it would all, you could do the same thing and you just kind of have that, those parts be that different shade of color. Laura has the 3D snowflakes, which are just like these, but they're the 3D. Very good. Awesome. Uh, Valerie says the wood grain, this one with, so with light brown paper, but with um, a dark brown ink on the embossing plate and it looks like weathered wood. That is a good idea. Oh, and then this one, also you could rub, if you have like gilding paste or glimmery type things that are kind of in a paste form or a paint form, you could do the same thing that where I um, added, you know, I rubbed the ink on the embossed uh, portion. You could do the same thing on your embossed. So this, this one would look really pretty with like um, like a gold or a silver paste rubbed over it, rub and buff maybe, um, glimmer paste, whatever you, you know, whatever kind of creamy paste type stuff you might have. You can also get real mixed media on this and add different colors of paint and things. I'm just so curious. I don't know what this is going to look like because usually white only looks good on a really, really light colors, but I'm just curious enough to try it because <laughs> I have this black one. I'm just curious. I'm going to do half of it with just this white. I just want to see what happens. Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> okay, that's impressive. Wow. It's fun to play, huh? <laughs> you never know what you're going to discover. That is gorgeous. I'm glad I tried that. Valerie meant, oh, gray for Weatherwood. Yeah, you could, so like a gray ink and, and a gray paper or um, a gray paper and, and black ink for the Weatherwood. Yeah, that would look great. You could also do um, some like um, uh, like bluish green colors for like a like a patina kind of a look would be kind of cool. I happen to have this swirly 
psychedelic paper from um, Lawn Fawn. And it comes in a pack of like five different crazy cool um, designs. Here's some of the other designs in that pack. That one. <laughs> these are really fun. I did, I did a card with these a few months ago making snowflakes, which was a lot of fun. I'm just curious what it might look like with the swirly paper, with the swirly design. So let's do that. That's, this is, I'm just playing now. I'm just having fun with curiosity. Okay. I sprayed, I sprayed it once on each side. One, two, three times the charm. incredible it's like swirls on swirls <laughs> wow psychedelic huh and look how different that looks from this one and they're both metallic paper and then here's the deboss side in white or in, in craft very cool what do you like best do you like the swirls do we like the um, typeface the this one oh so pretty. I, it's kind of a mess now because I tried all those different techniques on it, but the botanical, the leaf, um, I feel like I didn't do one. Did I do them all? I think I did. Anything else? I did. Okay. Let's try one of Valerie's suggestions real quick here. So that's going to be the lumber one. Let's try adding a dark color. I'm going to go black and I'm going to try adding some black ink on here and this folder looks so interesting on both sides I'm going to do it on both sides just to see what happens and I'm going to do a nice piece of craft I think I don't I don't have a gray super handy but Valerie so I'm going to do a craft Missed it. Missed it and emboss it. Here we go. One. So here's the craft paper without any color. Ooh, Valerie. Yes, ma'am. Look at that. Look at how the knot of wood stands out. Now that was the one side. Let's see what the other side looked like. This is the deboss side. Yes. That was way faster and easier than um, applying it afterwards in that case. I think that looked really cool. I'm going to go ahead and clean this off before I forget. It's hard to see the black on there. <laughs> yeah, see how that comes right up. So that is a 3D folders 101. We've uh, we've we've established that you definitely are gonna want a Mr. Bottle full of plain tap water. You're definitely gonna want a, um, a heavier weight paper. I cut my, there's one other experiment I wanted to try that I've honestly never done. I don't know if it'll work, but I'm just curious. I have this acetate. It's not what I would call super thick, but you can emboss Tim Holtz's foil tape, and that is very thin, um, very much uh, very much like a, an aluminum foil, and that looks amazing, and the, the, certainly the benefit of his foil tape is that after you've embossed it, you can then mold it around a three-dimensional three object. So I don't know if getting wet, this getting wet is going to make a difference or not. I'm going to do the swirls. I'll go ahead and get it wet just because that's the process. <laughs> okay, and we're going to do the swirls. 
I'm just curious if it's going to emboss or not, or if it will rip. We'll find out. Oh, okay. I'm a righty. <laughs> Get the handle on the side that I needed on. All right. One. Ooh, I hear it. I hear it popping. Hopefully it's pop it's embossing and not tearing. This is fine. It's a little too easy to, to go back and forth. I don't know if it would need a shim or something. Let's find out. <gasps> you guys, it worked. <gasps> oh my gosh. Okay, I need a piece of black, something that you can see. Look, it totally worked. <laughs> Yay! Look at that. Yeah, that looks so cool. I love that. Okay, so this being um, a non-porous surface, I could add um, some alcohol ink to it after the embossing. Don't put alcohol ink in your folder, but you could put alcohol ink on top of this if you wanted to, or under it. Just put it under. That would be really cool. But look at that. Of course, you could add paint to it or something. Put it under the black again, over the black. I think you can just see it a little better. Look at that. That is so cool. And it looks great on both sides. Did it tear at all? I don't see I don't think so. No, there's no, it did not puncture at all. That's amazing. Yes. Okay. So we've learned a couple things. I learned a couple things. That is fun. Okay. Now my mind is like, what can I make with that? That's really cool. Okay, so we can emboss on acetate. We can add ink to the folder before. We can just do regular embossing. We can add ink after. This one was just stunning, isn't it? That white on black, ooh, so pretty. We can add Versamark over top of the embossing for a tone on tone look, for a soft, subtle look, that's amazing. Did you know you could, um, take an embossing folder like let's say this one so you can take your plain piece of paper go ahead and stamp your greeting on the paper in like a black ink let's say and then put it through the, go ahead and you know go ahead put it through the folder do everything like normal and then when you take it out you will have your sentiment um into the embossed design which that might not look great with a super heavy pattern like the lumber or the woven but something like this or a floral that could be very pretty Okay, so we added the embossing or the clear ink over it. It looks amazing in metallics, whether the holographic or not. They just, because it captures all of that detail. You can add ink after you've embossed. You can rub it directly on. You can use a blending brush or paint. I think the blending brush looks the best. You can add ink to either the positive or the negative side of the folder before running it through. These were directly rubbed onto the, onto the folder, or you could use a brayer if you want a, a very, um, seamless uh, color lay down where these are a little bit more distressed looking with a little bit of the strident streaking kind of a situation. I think these look best, but you can do a soft blend of color. Um, and we know that we need, for the most part, we need heavier duty paper. If you experience, if you try playing with these and you experience your paper ripping, the most likely reason is because you either have weights, you do not have the right sandwich, like you're trying to use both cutting mats or something, or you have too thin of paper. So most of the time it's gonna be too thin of paper, so if you're having a struggle with that, try a little bit of a heavier weight paper. And then of course, wetting the paper helps soften the paper and mold so that it can mold around these amazing 3D folders, which are just incredible it's <laughs> so much fun to play with fun things to add to your arsenal of crafting supplies and now we've looked at all these different ways you can use folders so you could apply all these different techniques and more i'm sure to um whatever folders you have thereby taking one folder and making it into many different kinds of looks that you can achieve so i i'm all about giving you <laughs> some justifications for like buying some more folders right okay any a shaker card window. Ooh, yes. Good idea. Good idea, Valerie. If there's any questions that I missed. Oh, how about thin and metal copper sheets from Barbara? Yes, you can do that. It looks fantastic. Be very super careful if it's really, if it really is truly metal sheets because the edges can be sharp. That has nothing to do with the embossing. That's just, that's just the nature of that kind of, of a substrate. So 
be careful, but yes, it is amazing you can do that. Uh, Valerie, you can emboss clay. I have never done that. I've heard that, but I've never done that. That sounds amazing. I would guess that you don't even need the folder though, huh? or the uh, machine, you just kind of press it into, maybe roll it over with a, um, a rolling pin maybe, just because clay is so accepting of the, of pressure. Okay, looks like we had a lot of people enjoy that. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. 